Welcome back everybody. Chef David here from the New Wave Studio Kitchen. Today we're gonna to do actually one finished dish based off of two dishes using our precision induction cooktops, which you know about infrared technology. We have one of the best in the industry. And also our forged copper cookware with the Dorlon ceramic coating. One of the best nonstick in the industry. No harmful chemicals for your family. So dish number one, we're gonna start with uh, some potatoes and we have some beautiful actually local chicken breast. It comes from a farm over in Indiana called uh, Miller. Uh, really nice people, really good stuff. And uh, if you see the little discoloration on here, this is because I air dried them a little bit. It's actually a pretty cool technique. You put these in your refrigerator uncovered. It dries out the skin a little bit after about six or eight hours or even overnight. And then when you cook it, the skin actually gets crispier because all the moisture is gone. Very simple trick. Over here, palm fondant. I have two different types of potato. You could use uh, any one of several. Uh, the red waxy or red bliss type potato, a Yukon gold, and in a pinch, you could use simply a russet potato. Uh, this is basically like a baking potato. I have them right here. So this is the Yukon gold, and you see, I'll trim it off a little bit just so you can see the inside. It's that beautiful creamy butter colored yellow. Sometimes they call them butter potatoes in the Midwest, uh, but these are actually technically a Yukon gold. Or in a pinch, you can use, you know, a traditional small baking potato. Chicken potatoes, when you see this green on here, this is actually not good for you. And this means the potato is not ripe. So just leave them in your cupboard, uh, wrapped in some newspaper, don't leave them wrapped in plastic, they'll grow the eyes, uh, and they'll finish maturing and then you can eat them. So always look for a potato that's completely brown, doesn't have that green tinge, it's not good for you. You can look that up. Uh, compost, so let me show you real quick the technique to cut these. And uh, you'll see some debate online about this and I'm sure I'll get some emails, nobody does it perfect. But here's basically the, the rule, is we're in a beautiful round potato, and the edges are a little bit beveled, which I'll show you the trick to do that. And then we're gonna heat this up, and we're gonna get some olive oil in here, and a little butter. If I just put the butter in without the oil, the butter could burn before the potatoes get a nice brown. Once I turn them, and they're brown, a little bit of homemade chicken stock, and they go right in the oven. It can take about 25 minutes in the oven, and they're gonna come out by that time, I'll already be sauteing these beautiful organic chicken breasts. Later on, we'll combine them. We'll all have a nice lunch together. So let's get started. On the potatoes, in order to make them round, there's two tricks. You could do with a knife. You can do them on the cutting board with a knife. Here's what I like to do. I like to use my potato peeler. I'm just going long strikes like this, all the way around. If you've never seen one of these, it's actually called a Swiss peeler. Almost every chef I know uses one of these. They're very comfortable in your hand. They're very sharp. I'll tell you what, you cut yourself with a potato peeler, you'll remember not to do it again. But also what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get that round shape because obviously all potatoes aren't perfectly round. Uh, and the other trick that you can do, which we've done in restaurants before because we want things to be more asymmetrical, we want things to be almost perfect, is we actually cut the potatoes in half lengthwise. And we use a little circle cutter or cookie cutter to cut out these perfect shapes in a potato. But that's basically what I'm looking for is a rounded type shape. And then to bevel the edge just on an angle, just go around with your potato peel. It's simple. Don't have to do this. It's just kind of the classic look to a pump fondant. And these are actually really nice potatoes, but you're gonna see why these go so well with a roast or a chicken. So that's that. So let's clean up a little bit and let's get our potatoes straight away in the pan. That goes in my compost. So. PIC, you guys know about this. Start, it's going on max sear. It's gonna get hot almost instantaneously. So what I'm gonna do is very simple. I'm gonna take some olive oil. That's about a tablespoon and a half, okay? And I know on these recipes I'm supposed to measure the butter for you, but this, let's just call this a whole lot of butter. That's one tablespoon. Let's do a tablespoon and a half for now. Later on we come back and we pull the dish out of the oven, I'm gonna hit it with a little more butter because I think you guys already know I love butter. Okay, so that's gonna get hot. The second thing I do is I get my pepper in now. A lot of chefs, you'll see them put their potatoes or put the food product in and then put the pepper. I don't do that. I like to get mine in the oil because it starts to heat up, becomes more fragrant, okay? So that's very simple to do. So we let this get around. Butter's hanging out with the olive oil, just looking good. We don't have to go fast. Let's take these potatoes, watch how simple it is. Just put them in face down. What we're looking for is for these to caramelize, to get a nice browned color. Then we'll turn them, hit them with the stock, cover them, and go to the oven. 25 minutes later, fantastic. So I was only gonna do a couple of these, but now I see the whole crew here eyeballing me, let's do them all. 
The other thing I want to do is we'll do half of the Yukon Gold and the other half of the Russets, and we'll see which one is better. So what I did was after I peeled and, and, and got these in this beautiful shape, I actually put them in water. But before you cook them, you have to drain them really well. Even if you have to pat them with a little paper towel, it's fine. But the water content on there is going to splatter, make a mess. It's going to create steam, which is going to prevent them from browning. We want a nice golden brown color, right? All right, so beautiful sea salt. I think this sea salt is from Croatia. We try to use different types of sea salt just so we can talk about them culturally. So it's about a good teaspoon. Uh, garlic cloves, two peeled garlic cloves. Leave them whole, or you can take your hand, just give them a little squish. That'll release the oil, but we won't have chopped garlic all over the dish. That's not what we want. Classically, and the way I was trained many years ago, when we made this dish, always fresh thyme. But right now it's cold in Chicago, and I think rosemary kind of fits this dish better. And I could, if I wanted to, pull the stems off, or the leaves off the stem. I could even chop them up if I wanted to, or I could just put them in a hole, and then later on, it's easier to take out. But this is gonna, as it hits the oil, it's gonna release rosemary oil, which you know is an essential oil. It's just gonna give you this beautiful fragrance. All right, we'll save some of this for the chicken breast later. All right, potatoes out of the way. It's actually very, very simple. We let this go, it's getting hotter because it's on sear. Make sure they're all sitting flat. Once you know they're all coated in the oil, don't play with them. Leave them in one position, they'll brown better. If you start shaking the pan, toss them all over, they're never gonna get brown on one side. And what we're looking for is this beautiful golden crust. So as soon as we come back, I'm going to show you the finished potatoes, get them in the oven, and we're gonna get started on our chicken breast. So they both come out of the oven at the same time and we can sit down and have dinner. Welcome back everybody, Chef David here. Okay, palm fondant, looking beautiful in the pan. Check them every once in a while, see the brown. See this beautiful crust I'm getting on there? We have to let this go until it's really nice and golden. Don't shake them around a lot, just leave them, let them cook. Over here, PIC on high. I'm gonna take these beautiful chicken breasts, Now make sure you don't handle them with your hands, you have to sanitize everything, your cutting board. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer them to the pan with a knife. I've got my pan, I just turned it on. I'm gonna use a little olive oil, and very similar to how I did the potatoes, and very traditional in Europe to do it this way. I'm gonna take a couple of cloves of garlic. Now you saw me put a couple of peeled cloves over in our potatoes, right? Watch what I do here, a little different. It's a mess, but that's okay, we'll use it again. I take these, these cloves like this, and I just crush them a little bit, but I'm leaving the skin on, okay? These are going in just like that. It's gonna release the oil, but not too much garlic flavor. It's gonna be very subtle, just like that. If you have any of the paper, the paper can go, but the skin itself, I don't mind if you leave it on, okay? It's not edible, we're not going to eat it, but I don't want a super strong garlic flavor in this dish. Now, the organic chicken breasts, these come from Indiana. I air dried them in the refrigerator. You can easily do this in your own refrigerator. Just make sure raw chicken doesn't come in contact with any other food, right? And what I'm gonna do is, I've got my oil, I've got garlic. We're gonna get a piece of rosemary, just like with the potatoes. That rosemary will start flavoring the oil. The oil cooks the chicken, flavors the chicken. And now these are gonna go in just like this. Now, you don't hear a lot of sizzle and there's a reason for that. I, even though I just put this on sear, I haven't let it heat up too long because I don't wanna have my chicken in a super raging hot pan because what happens is the skin will seize up. And that's not what we want with this dish, right? So we're gonna let these brown a little bit. In this one, it's gonna get a little butter too. The butter's gonna add some flavor, okay? This one's also gonna get some sea salt, but the sea salt's going on the cut side, if you notice, okay? And also I'm gonna get the pepper over in my oil so it starts getting that flavor. And as I move these chickens around, the black pepper will actually get on the chicken. But that's gonna get that fragrance coming straight out of the pepper. I didn't put salt on the skin side, very simple. The skin pulls moisture out. When I pull moisture out on the skin side, it makes steam. Steam doesn't make for good browning, okay? So we're gonna let those go for a second. Let's come over here. Check on our potatoes. You guys see that color? I don't know if you can see this. Look at this. It's exactly what we're looking for, all right? So let's get these guys turned over. You can see the butter is starting to brown. There's some of the milk solids. I got that beautiful brown foam when you wanna 
really nice brown butter. My garlic is starting to get a little toasty. Look at the garlic. It's beautiful. It smells amazing, guys. I wish you were here. So turn these over, and then I'll show you what we do next. It's so simple. It could not be easier to make a classic French potato dish, pom fondant. Okay. Just like that. A little more pinch of salt, good sea salt, and homemade chicken stock. Could you use vegetable stock? Absolutely, to make it vegetarian or vegan. We make our vegetable stock here at the studio using dried chickpeas, and uh, we'll get a video up for that soon. This is about, probably about a half a cup of good chicken stock. I want to cover them, eh, a little more. I want to cover them about halfway, and that's it. The lid goes on, okay, in the oven. Ready? Good hot oven, 400 degrees. They're gonna go in for about 25 minutes. Now over here, here's the other thing I love about our PIC, the one New Wave makes. You remove the pan, you get an E1 notification on here. That's an error message. That means there's no pan in contact with that. That'll flash for a little bit and turn the unit off. But right now this unit's not heating up. And if you know anything about induction cooktops and precision, the only heat on here is residual heat left from the metal, but this thing itself is not hot, okay? So here we go. With this, I'm gonna grab my fork that I used for the chicken before, so I don't contaminate anything else. And let's just take a look at the skin. You see this beautiful color? That comes very simply, I mean, that's almost flawless. This comes very simply from the air drying of the, chickens, the chicken breast with the skin in the refrigerator. So the air flowed around it and dried the skin. And also because I did not put salt on the skin to pull more moisture out. Garlic, look at that. Looking beautiful. It's going to come out tasting like roasted garlic. We can squeeze that out of the skin onto a nice piece of toast. Rosemary's flavor in the oil. And now what I'm going to do with these, I'm not going to cover them. Contaminated fork in the dishwasher. I'm not going to cover these. These are going to go in just like this with about a tablespoon of stock just to create some steam, but not enough steam to take away the crunch of my beautiful skin. Okay? So these are not going to be covered when I put them in. So this... One more pinch of good sea salt right on top. A little pepperoncini, that's the Italian in me. A little bit more butter. Okay. And a splash of our homemade stock. About two tablespoons right there. Just enough to create a little steam. But I want my skin crispy. These go in the oven too. 30 minutes at 400 degrees. They should come out perfectly moist just after the potatoes come out and rest a little bit. And always remember, chicken, when you cook it in the oven, our new wave oven, our air fryer, all chicken has to be cooked internally, a minimum, 165 Fahrenheit. So let me get these in. Look at that butter foaming up. Can you guys see that? Look how amazing that is. Isn't that beautiful? All right? This butter is just so valuable right now. A lot of chefs will do this. This is an old technique. Get the garlic out of the way, get the rosemary out of the way, and take the butter and get it on top. Now, this is mostly fat with a little bit of that stock, but this will bring a lot of this moisture right on top of these chicken breasts. This is beautiful. Let's get this guy in the oven. Spoon is now contaminated, goes in the dishwasher. And this guy, that turns off, goes right to E1. I love these machines, they're actually really good. Put this in the oven. And the minute we come back, we're gonna have an amazing meal in our copper forged cookware using our precision induction cooktops. See you in a bit. Welcome back everybody, Chef David here from New Wave Studio Kitchen. Let's get our reveal on, let's show you what these beautiful Miller Farms organic chicken breasts look like with the crispy skin and also more importantly, one of the first dishes I learned really to make, potatoes fondant or palm fondant. Let's go to the oven, let's come back out. All right, so here we are. Let's do the potatoes first, because this is really, really awesome. So this, look at that, oh boy. Let me just take one out to show you. Look at this, these things are the most amazing things. Look at that. You get these on a plate, these are just the most amazing color on there, right? Look, I've got my garlic floating around here, a little bit of the stock. I could actually simmer the stock down a little bit and make a nice butter sauce. Now, let's get the chicken breast. Oh boy. Now you could easily do these in our new wave oven. All these recipes will work there, right? Let's get our PIC, move this stuff. But I want you to see 
couple of things. Let me show you just real quick. I want to cut a couple of chives because I like chives with this dish. And we're just going to cut them real fine, real fast. We're not going to get fancy on this, right? Now, the second thing we can do, and I think I'll do it for you over here on the chicken because that has all the chicken flavor. You know, unfortunately, this is not a vegetarian dish. The potatoes can be. Use a little vegetable stock instead of the chicken stock, right? But the chicken, that's chicken. Let's get this on a high sear. Bring the heat back up. I'm gonna finish that little pan sauce right there. A little splash of butter, okay? Compost for this. Now, let's show you what we've got, guys. Take out the chicken. Get my chef hands in there. I can take a little bit of the heat, not much, but a little bit. All right. A couple of beautiful chicken breasts. All right. I can even take out the garlic, and I can show you a trick right now. Kind of, I just remembered. So look, I have a little fat in here, and I've got some juice from the chicken. Get rid of the rosemary. Let's put that in the compost. Watch this, guys. Now be careful because this could burn your hands. Remember I told you how this is going to come out like roasted garlic? Take it out of the skin, falls right out. Look at this. The most amazing flavor if you've ever had roasted garlic. Trust me on this one. These guys compost. Now watch. We just give them a little mash. Right? And then I'm going to turn off the heat. One more. Look at this guy. So soft. So melted. Beautiful country sauce right here. Let's turn the heat off. And now, quick butter sauce. A couple of little knobs of butter, pinch of sea salt, right? Remember your handle's hot from the oven. I forgot that like twice. Get this down, cut them, break them up, and just stir it. And sometimes, I can grab my stock over here. Let me show you one more trick. Turn it back on, grab a little bit of my leftover chicken stock. Even better if you have some good white wine. And just keep stirring this, because if you stop, the butter can actually separate out from the sauce and it'll look broken. But adding a little wine or a little chicken stock back in there will bring it back together. But let's get all the butter melted. We already freshened it up with a little sea salt. We're gonna hit it with another crack of pepper. And if you really want it to, to get up there, Nice piece of fresh lemon. Sauce, roasted garlic, chicken pan sauce, done. Fondant potatoes, look at these babies. Look at this, this is amazing guys. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful color, not disappointing today on this. I'm very happy with this, garlic cloves. And again, you might think this seems like a lot of garlic. It's not. When the garlic roasts, it actually just completely changes. Let's get the chive on there. Okay, little cracked pepper. Little crack in the sauce. Another little bit of sea salt. Now look, you can take your beautiful chicken breast if you want. Oh boy, that's beautiful. And we can slice it in a few pieces. Right here, like that, okay? Then all I have to do to get this roasted garlic, chive, and, and uh, chicken pan sauce right on top. Guys, a restaurant quality meal made right in your house in about an hour's time, okay? And that's just something else. Forged copper cookware, door lawn coating, and uh, one of the things that made New Wave famous, beautiful precision induction cooktop, roasted Indiana organic chicken breast with the palm fondant, don't make a mess on a plate like the chef did. Cook yours at home, take a picture, follow us on social media, check out our websites, and send me a picture of this or an email. Let me know how yours came out.